The greatest mystery in life is that your destiny was chosen by God, but its fulfillment is decided by you. I want to say it again. Your destiny is chosen by God, but its fulfillment is decided by you. That's a heavy responsibility. In other words, God has already completed your life. And he has written a book on you and finished your life. And you are already successful. But making it to the end of that destiny is your decision. It's like a parent who pays thousands of dollars for their child to go to college because the parent already sees a degree. But the child goes to college and instead of participating and disciplining and studying, the child wastes time, keeps company that distracts him or her, and the child does not graduate. You have already been chosen by God to succeed, but you have to cooperate with that decision to make sure you arrive at God's results for you. Is that clear? And number five, the future is unreleased destiny. Number six. trapped in the beginning say that with me the future is the end trapped in the beginning uh, here's an apple I was gonna bring one today but I figured this is good enough if you open that apple in that apple you'll find a little group of seeds little black seeds there do you know that in those seeds are apple trees do you agree yes and there are apples in those seeds as well, right? Yeah. So that means the future of that apple is inside the apple. And the future of the apple seed is inside the seed. That's why I say God places the future of everything in itself. The attitude, therefore, that we've been getting is that our future is ahead of us. And that's not true. Your future to you. Very important. Number two, you possess your future when? Now, apples possess their seeds now and seeds possess trees now. And so it is everything God created. Uh, <coughs> an egg is a chicken. Now. <laughs> All it needs is a little process. The future of everything is in the thing. So when you approach life through the years, you got to remember, this year is in me. Oh, help me, Jesus. I made a decision for this year. And I'm praying for God to help me keep it. My decision is that this year will be five to one. Anybody made that with me? Holy Spirit said to me, I'm going to do in one year what it takes five years to do. He said, but you got to work with me. I told him, I'm working with him. He said, therefore, you got to be careful who you allow to waste your time. Hallelujah. Some of the things that you've been putting up with, you can't put up with anymore. There's some things you have to forget about this year. In order to move on to things you're supposed to do. There are some people you're going to have to forget this year to move on to what you have to do. Very important. Number three. God is committed to the future he placed in you. 
And this is very important. We talked about this last time. And number four, your future is more important than your past. It's always good to remember that no matter what happens in the past, it's not as important as your future. So don't live. This verse is very important. Remember, I told you that your future is God's past. Well, this. God never begins anything at the beginning. <laughs> he ends it first and then he backs up and he starts. That means when God starts anything, he's already finished. It's very important to understand this. That means God completely. is actually God's past. He's already finished your future. Now he's back enough to start your beginning with the future already finished. He said, there's no other God who can do that. That's why that verse is important. Eh? Very important verse. I am God and there's none like me. No other. I love it. God don't allow anything to start unless it's already finished. That's what he said. I said the end before I begin. So that's why God doesn't panic about anything. You don't panic when you're finished. You only worry when you're not sure about the outcome. But if you already completed the outcome before you started, there's no need to worry. Can I hear an amen? That's why in your hand right now, you have a book that has the end and the beginning in it already. And we are somewhere in the middle, you know, down. Look at verse 11. In him you were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will for your life. Oh, what a loaded verse. Your future is easy for God. Look at this. In him you also chosen. How? Having been predestined. Predestined means destination set before beginning. That's all it means. Predestined. But it says according to what? The plan. Everybody say the plan. Now it doesn't say a plan. <laughs> Can I hear an amen? I feel like I need something. I know what I need. What I need. Yeah. Everybody say a plan and the plan. God says, I have set. Oh, that's interesting. I better not use that. A plan. I want to do a demonstration to show you how this works. God says, I have preset your destination. Then I backed up and I started your life. Baby born, conceived. He said, now your future is already finished. And I have a plan to get you there. <laughs> okay, let me try it again. Your purpose is your destination. The plan is the route. Now he said, read it, he says, I pre- destinated you and then I did it according to the plan God has a way to get you to your destination he has a way to get you to your future Lord have mercy there's a way it's not just the future there's a way also he set for it now God will always tell you your destiny You'll always see these big dreams. You'll see these big things. He, Hosea, uh, Isaiah 46 says what? I set the end before the beginning, and then I make known at the beginning what is yet to come. In other words, he tells you the destination. But what he doesn't ever tell you. Oh, praise God. Turn mic up, please. I'm struggling too much with this sound. Listen. God says, I set your future. I set a route to get you there. I'll tell you the future.